In this chapter, we're working with scale representations. In this lesson, we're going to look at two-dimensional and three-dimensional representations of objects. All right, hi everybody. So, in this lesson, we're looking at two-dimensional and three-dimensional representations of objects, okay? And basically, what we're really going to do here is we're going to take three-dimensional objects and we're going to try to break them down into some two-dimensional representations. And this is commonly done in lots of occupations here. Anytime you're looking at plans, blueprints, like you're in construction, you're building houses or whatever, or even if you're you're building objects, you know, constructing um, toys or whatever, oftentimes these things are, are made, uh, you've got these these diagrams that, that the people that are then responsible for making them have to work off of. So being able to look at a three-dimensional figure and picture what it would look like from the different perspectives, okay, is, is a, a really important thing that we want you to be comfortable with. So when looking at a 3D object represented on a paper, you're often going to be looking at an isometric perspective, okay? Which gives you at least a couple of different views or, or what we say elevations here, okay? So here's an example right here of, a, of an isometric diagram of a, of a house here, a birdhouse, okay? Just to give you an idea. So you're kind of looking at it from the, like above and to the left sort of thing. So a view or elevation is a flat, kind of dead looking, uh, sorry, dead looking, dead on <laughs> Uh, representation of what the object looks like. So like directly in the front or directly from the side or directly from on top to look at it here. On the other hand, a component part uh, is going to be a, a diagram that shows you all of the different uh, individual pieces separated from each other so that you, you can see what all the pieces are that you need to put together to create that object. And then finally, an exploded diagram is going to be the the object with the parts separated, but in the same sort of relative location that they need to be in to create the, uh, the object when you put them together. Okay. And so you've probably seen stuff like that. I mean, you'll, you'll often see these sort of exploded sort of diagrams in like, like Lego instructions and whatnot. I mean, I know oftentimes they, they show you them pieced together, but sometimes they'll show you, you know, the pieces need to go together in a certain way, but they're, they're separated in the diagram. Anyway, let's just take a look at this example of this birdhouse that I just showed you, and we'll look at the, the different ways that we can represent it. Okay, so here is our isometric diagram of a birdhouse with, with some dimensions drawn in it. So you get a sense of, of the dimensions here. Now, not everything is here. Not all of the dimensions are shown. Um, and so when we go through and, and do some of our work here, we're going to be missing a little bit of the detail here, but that's okay. We're just trying to give you an idea of, of what we're, we're doing here. Now, uh, I ran into some technical issues making uh, this particular video here, and um, I lost a lot of, uh, well, I lost, I lost all of it. I lost all of the video, so I'm doing this again here. But I've already gone through and drawn these diagrams in, and um, so I'm just going to kind of leave them here with, with us. So... Here we go. First of all, I want to talk about the front view. And so here's what I did with the front view here. Now, notice when you take a look at the front here, I, it's like I'm standing right here and looking at it dead on. Okay. And so what I'm seeing is the, is the side of the roof. Now, there's reason here to believe that the pieces of wood that are being used are half inch thick. But that's not necessarily true of all of the different pieces of wood as we go around the the, di, um, the birdhouse here. It's not necessarily uh, something you can assume for the roof here. I mean, maybe. But anyway, oops, sorry about that. Um, what I know, though, for the roof here is that the length along the side here is, is five and three quarter inches. We know that from the bottom of the birdhouse to the top is nine and three sixteenths of an inch. Okay, that's given to us right here. Okay, you can see from here, this, this line runs along the bottom, and then the top of this one runs right to the top here. Uh, the five and three quarter inches is given here. We take these two lines and extend them, and then we got this little arrow going in between. So we know that. And then the bottom of the birdhouse, I know right across the bottom here is going to be six inches. Now, I have no idea how high up it goes before it contacts the, the roof. I don't know what the radius of that opening is for the the birds to go in. I don't know how high up it is. I also don't know the radius or how high up that piece of doweling is for them to, to sit on. So there is clearly some data that's missing here. 
but you get the idea, okay? If I was to look at it from the top, so now I'm going to look at the, the birdhouse right from on top here. What I'm going to see are those two rectangles that each represent uh, the piece of wood that's being used for the, the roof here. Now, all I know is that that roof there is 11 inches long, okay? And that's given to me right here. If you take a quick look at this, whoops, sorry. If you look at this 11 inches here, it shows the arrows coming out and then we take lines straight over to the, the peak of the roof. And that's 11 inches along here. I'm given a bunch of other dimensions here, but if I'm looking down right on top of it, I can't actually see those. So sometimes what you'll see them do is we'll draw dotted lines to represent uh, bits of information that are obscured from view, but but w like would be visible if you could kind of see through it. I've also got the little piece of doweling that sticks out in the front, but again, I don't know I don't know any of the dimensions related to that. All I know is that this is eleven inches. I can't even tell you right now how far apart those those two uh, end bits are that would correspond to these points on the roof. Okay, I don't actually have any idea how how far apart they are. I could probably figure it out using some uh, some math, but I uh, like the Pythagorean theorem and whatnot. But I think there's other things here that are missing that would that make that hard to to judge for sure. In any case, there you go. Now, the side view. Okay, we are looking at the birdhouse from this side right here. So what do we see? Well, we're going to see. Whoops. Sorry, you, you can't see that. Okay, we're going to see the roof, the one part of the roof here. Again, this line right here is actually at a slant and it's technically like coming out of the page here. So that five and three quarter inches doesn't actually apply here. That's that's not what I'm seeing. But I am seeing the total length of it, which I know is going to be 11 inches. I know that the height of the birdhouse is going to be nine and three sixteenths of an inch. Now down here, I can see, I can see the pieces of wood that were used to put those together. I know that those are each going to be half inch thick. Okay, and I know that the distance along the bottom from the front of the birdhouse to the back, and I can see that right here is going to be nine inches. Now, what that means is, and I can throw this in here as well, that the piece of wood that's used for the side here, this distance right here is actually going to be eight inches. It's nine from the very back to the very front. And then each of these pieces of wood on the side there, the, the front and the, the back here are going to be half inch thick. So it's going to leave us with eight inches right there. So anyway, that's, that's one way to represent that birdhouse. Actually, I should say that these are two ways. Here's the isometric drawing. And then here are these, these the three different views from the front, the top, and the side. All right. For this particular question, we're asked to draw the component parts of the birdhouse with dimensions here. Now, again, not all the dimensions are given, okay? And in fact, some of them we don't really have the ability to figure out because some of them are missing. But that, that's okay. We're just going to get the general sense of this. So the very first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to write out the pieces for the roof. Okay, I'm going to draw the pieces for the roof here. And those are just going to be rectangular in shape. But with a, a little twi uh, tweak here, and I'm going to refer back to the diagram here in just a moment here, but here's the, the roof. I know it's going to be 11 inches uh, long, and I know that they said it was going to be five uh, and three quarters okay, of an inch from, from the top to the bottom there. Now, I put two times here because there's going to be two of them. Now, one thing I want you to notice okay, is that for that roof there, notice that this part of it right here the, the top uh, face and the bottom face are perpendicular to each other. But over here, that was cut at a bit of an angle. And it's cut at a bit of an angle so that I can piece those together at the top. And so that's why over here in my diagram, I've drawn this little dotted line right there to represent that, that piece that's missing. And I'm going to cover that up right now so I don't think about it. So there's that little that little ledge that's on there that's that's on the other side of this. Now... For my two sides, okay, and these are the sides of the, the birdhouse here, and I was talking about this a moment ago, these are going to be eight inches wide. I'm not sure how tall they are. We were never told that. But I know there's going to be two of them. Now, additionally, notice I've drawn this extra little ledge here. That's because, once again, because of the roof. And I've actually drawn this piece over here. Along the 
the edge here, what's probably going to happen here is that that piece of wood, when you look at it kind of straight on here, this is the side, this is the outside. This right here is the inside. Notice at the top here, there's going to be a, it's going to be cut at a bit of an angle. And that's because I'm going to lay this piece of wood that I'm using for the roof against that. So the roof is going to lay against that right there. And then I've got this front facing thing that I'll, I'll put on front there. So that's what I'm trying to illustrate with that particular little line right there. Then we've got the front. Okay. I know that the front is going to be six inches wide. But you know what? I don't even know. I, I know that the front is going to have this, this circular opening and then it's going to have this little hole here where that uh, piece of doweling is going to go. But because I don't know how thick the, the roof is, I don't even know how tall this is. I know that it was, um, what was it, 9 and 3 sixteenths of an inch from the bottom to the very top. But I don't know how tall this piece of wood is. And I don't know what that dimension is where I start to cut it at an angle there. So those are things that I would I would need to know. I mean, I'd also need to know, for example, how high up the center of this circle is, what the radius is, things like that. And then finally, and this I don't want to lose sight of this particular uh, part of the problem here. There is a bottom to the birdhouse. When the birds come in, there is there is a floor to it. Now, we've already talked about this. the The front piece and the back piece they go right down to the bottom. Okay, if you look at the diagram there, maybe we should go back to it. If you look at that diagram, the isometric one, that front piece of wood goes right down to the bottom of the birdhouse. It's not like the bottom is is hammered on at the at the at the bottom. It's built first, and then this is put. This is kind of nailed on onto that onto that little frame that's getting built there. So. Although this one is, sorry, although the front is six inches wide, we're assuming that that piece of wood on either side here is going to be half of an inch. So I'm going to come in half an inch there, half an inch there. That means the width of the bottom is going to be five inches. And just like the side length here, the side length of the base is going to be eight inches. And so those are all the pieces that we would use to build this birdhouse. All right. Now we want to take a look at the exploded diagram of the birdhouse. This is where we take the, the pieces that we just drew up here, okay, these pieces, and we're going to put them together in their correct relative location to each other, but, but apart. Now, don't, don't judge me too harshly on this. Um, <laughs> this is not my forte, but here's my exploded view of the birdhouse. Okay, so I have got the two pieces that would go as the roof there kind of pulled away from each other. Here's the back. Here's the front. Okay. Now notice that I'm, I'm kind of overlapping other pieces here. The, the intention is you would recognize what these are and see how they fit together. So the base here is, is kind of underneath the roof and a little bit behind the front piece. Okay. That's, that's okay. I know where that fits there. That that's at the bottom. And then the two sides here fit in. These, the front and the back are going to fit against that. And then the roof here, the two pieces are going to come on top here. I've even got the little piece of doweling out front here that would slide into this part of the, uh, the, the front of the birdhouse right there for the bird to sit on. I'm not really including the, the dimensions here. You've, you've got uh, diagrams where the dimensions are, are written out there, as, as many as we've got there. This is just to show you, as, in essence, how they would all fit together. And so that's that's what we really want you to understand in this lesson.